Hey everybody, it's Vision, and I'm here with a full-size keyboard build. And today we're going to be working with the Royal Clutch RK100 with new switches, keycaps, and a sound mod. The Royal Clutch RK100 is my first full-size keyboard I modded, and man, this took forever. This came with Cherry MX Brown switches, and man, this board sounded horrible. Alright, that's enough torture. Now we're going to go ahead and break down this board. Of course, we've got to remove the keycaps, which these keycaps, they're not that good. I would recommend even a $20 kit on Amazon to replace this full set. The plate that comes with this board, eh, it's not that bad. Gets the job done. It is uh, feels like an aluminum, all metal, so you're going to get more of a clackety sound when you type on it compared to other fancier plates. The thing that I'm really excited about this board is it's actually Bluetooth. So, I don't really have to keep a cable plugged into it, even though I have that fancier cable mod coiled up cable. I Having mean, Bluetooth might be a nice feature, but we'll see how it goes in the future. It does come with a battery inside of it, and disconnecting these cables are kind of a pain. This board also comes with a hot swappable PCB, which I'm really happy for. I don't have to go around soldering another 100 switches. And along with the aluminum case, it's going to make a really interesting sound profile. Just so I don't cause a nightmare for myself, I blue painter taped off all the connectors. I just want to make sure I do not get silicone in there. I did also start to blue painter tape the USB controller, but I ended up just taking out the controller itself. The battery I left in because I believe it was mounted by adhesion and I didn't really want to redo that. So I just added a wrap around or blue painters tape for the battery. And for the silicone port itself, I'm going to do the same thing I did for my $10 keyboard upgrade and just use the same silicone port. Part A, part B, one to one mixture. Now, there is a worry that I did originally have, and that's pouring silicone around the battery. Now, I didn't submerge the battery, so the bottom of it and the top of it is still clear enough. And the bottom of the board is aluminum or metal, so heat dissipation hopefully kind of plays off of that. But of course, I'll just monitor temperatures as I kind of use it over time. Now we're going to cut out the crevice for the USB-C controller. Just did a rough estimation where exactly it's at. Cut it out, pulled it out. And after cutting it, installing it, and removing all the painter's tape, it's ready for the next step. And of course, because this board came with MX Brown switches, I'm going to remove all of them and throw them straight into the trash. And for the biggest upgrade to the board, we're actually installing Akko 3-pin Jelly Blue switches. They are tactile, perfect for what I want this for. It's going to be a work keyboard, so the typing experience, we're hoping it's nice. One interesting thing about this board is the switch actually comes with a two-stage spring, which gives it a different feel than normal ones. These switches only came in packs of 45, at least through Amazon, so I had to buy three of them. I needed at least 100, so I ended up with 135. After taking apart all the switches, I barely had any fingernails left. And I went with the bag lubing method, a couple of drops of super lube inside and that's all you need. And of course we use some Crytox 205 grade zero. Now this switch is a bit more annoying to reassemble compared to other switches, mainly due to its two-stage spring design. It's a lot longer than normal MX type switches and placing the stem with its boxy design along with the top part of the switch takes a bit more accuracy. It took a bit to get the flow of it, but it did take me around three hours to complete. Yes, I lubed all 135 switches. Did I need to? No, but what's the point of having switches if you don't lube them?
And after those three hours, I was pretty done. For the stabilizers, I'm gonna use some dielectric grease. Now, it did already have some lubricant slash grease, so I removed that and applied this. For the keycaps, I really wanted to get something that complemented the board with the case and also the switches. So I ended up getting the Epo Maker Polar Bear. It has 146 keys in this set and I think it works really well. The keycap set is a MDA profile made of PBT. It is the flattest profile I've used and for me personally, it's great for typing, which makes it great for work. And time to put the board back together. Now, one thing I would like to do is go back and fill the gap in between the PCB and plate. Now, I'm not too sure what I can do as I can't really custom cut anything. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What can I do to fill this gap? One thing I have to get up to for this plate is its Fitbit is pretty on point. I didn't have any issues with any switches actually staying in the board or staying into the plate. If anyone ever picks up this board, do note the connectors in the back, the connections are pretty snug and the actual connection to the PCB itself seems kind of weak. And time to install those keycaps. And the one nice thing about these switches too is because of the boxy design, I feel like they're a lot more stable when you actually install the keycaps. This keyboard build I feel is pretty average for a normal person. You got a $80 board, $40 worth of keycaps, and $30 worth of switches. I ended up really liking the sound profile and really happy to use it for work too. I was before using a 75% keyboard, GMMK Pro. But I really like the number pad and the format makes it stand out a bit more compared to other keyboards. Thanks for watching everybody. What do you guys think? Would you pick up a keyboard with this kind of layout or would you still prefer using a 65%? I like the number pad because I'm actually going to be using it for work, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, feel free to leave it a like and subscribe. Have a good one.